Tesla has arrived and today is the day we finish our solar panel installation as well as kind of like the whole solar project. So take you back about a year ago, we started with our first solar system as well as three power walls. And that was a 51 panel system that was 16 and a half kilowatts. And then a few months ago, we actually added a fourth power wall, which is our fourth and final power wall that we are going to install. And today we are installing our last solar panels. It is 3.9 kilowatts in addition to what we already had. So we're gonna have a 20.4 kilowatt solar array with four power walls. But yeah, Tesla actually has arrived. So let's go ahead and check out what they're doing. Okay, so this is actually upstairs. The garage is below us. Um, so last time they were here, <laughs> these are all the ball pit balls, by the way, in case you're curious. But last time they were here, they had to sister the rafters up here. So since we're now putting solar on this side, they're having to do it on this side too for snow loads and everything. So you can kind of see there's just one right here that's kind of sandwiched against the old one. And they had to do that on all of them. And yeah, that's just due to the like snow load rating that we're supposed to have. Uh, I think it actually changed from when the house was originally built. So they're just upgrading that and make sure everything will pass inspection. And we are actually going with the same panels that we did have before installed they're the 325 watt panels that we're getting and now we have these optimizers which are kind of like a pass through in case one panel shaded everything will just keep working on that string rather than everything shut down so you can kind of have like micro inverters they don't really accomplish the same thing but kind of but these are what Tesla actually sells and includes on their small, medium, large, and extra large systems now. So you don't have to worry if a panel gets shaded, it won't affect your output of those other panels, which is really a nice feature. And so like the 315 watt panels they sell are actually like black and everything. But originally when we did our product, we just wanted the most efficient panels as possible. So like if we had gone with the 315 watt panels on the house instead of the 325, technically we'd be losing it probably about like 50 cents a day. So mind you, that's only like 170 or so dollars a year. When you multiply that over like the 20, 25 years that we plan on keeping the system, that's like $4,000. So yes, these are more efficient and they're not maybe that like nice black look, but since really no one sees the roof, I'd rather have efficiency over the looks of it in that case. So that is why we went with this, but I don't think they necessarily sell like these panels much anymore. We just wanted to match what we already have. Um, now most are gonna be that nice like black look, which most people prefer anyway. Okay, here is the side of the house all finished. Uh, we do have a bigger main shut off panel because the other one couldn't fit everything, so we had that. And then here is our solar edge inverter for the new 12 panels. And then we have the existing three with this nice little gutter. They were able to reuse all that conduit right there for the other solar wires that run all the way up. And um, yeah, so like that box was here, then there was another disconnect and then that. So they moved the box that was here right there bigger disconnect. I don't think they touched that. They did have to run a bigger conduit over to this. And that's uh, how it's gonna look from now on. Only that we're gray, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's nice that we were able to fit the new inverter in and, and boy, that's a lot bigger than the disconnect we had earlier. I know, it's like <laughs> twice the over, size. Cause the old disconnect was like, oh, was like that size. But it still fit in, or did they, they left that where it was, yeah. So as you see, we just got our four kilowatt system added to our existing 16.575 kilowatt system installed by Tesla. Both of them are Tesla systems. They were able to combine them, use the same wiring, same conduit, and hook into a new inverter. We have a new solar edge inverter. And the reason we had to get these uh, is we still had an electric bill. Even though we had a really large solar system, we have three to four cars charging on any given day. And we still have an electric bill, you know, between like November and March. And in order to help offset that usage, we went ahead and increased our system by another 25%. We added a standard Tesla 
small system, which is just under four kilowatt. So we added 12 panels to our existing 51 panel system for a total of 63 panels. Previously, we tried to put on as many panels as we could, but our utility company limits us and we were only allowed to put in like 120% of our previous year's usage, plus we were allocated a certain number of kilowatt hours depending on how many electric cars we had purchased during the previous year. And so we put in the largest system we could back in 2018. We then had to wait a year for another year's worth of usage and we had to prove to our electric company Excel that we still have an electric bill and we still needed more solar. So we added the 3.9 kilowatt system to get the solar system that we originally wanted, but we weren't allowed to have such a system because of the requirements. So while this new system is over 20 kilowatts total, it won't totally cover our usage 100%, but it will help us get much closer to that goal, along with our fourth power wall, which we had installed a few months ago in September. Okay, so as you can see, a little bit different on this side of the house. Uh, we now have our fourth inverter. This is different though than the other inverters. This is actually a solar edge for optimizers. Yeah, and basically the reason why we have a different one, before we had Delta uh, Solivia inverters, yeah. is because we had absolutely zero no shade. shade on the front of the house and the panels facing to the south and the southeast and the east. And so we didn't need to worry about having optimizers or any shade. Now that we are putting the panels in a not so optimal yeah. orientation towards the sun, we're still getting solar, but there is some morning shade and also we have a, uh, an exhaust vent on exhaust the roof vent, that can yeah. cause a little bit of a shadow for part of the day. So to help out with that, Tesla actually installs optimizers on all of their panels for small, medium, large, extra large systems, and they all come with that solar edge inverter. And what that'll do is basically if one panel gets a little covered up, everything else will still produce. Whereas the current systems that we did have, if one panel gets covered, it will actually block the power, but we didn't really matter on those because we're not worried about those getting shade. But for that other one, and since that's what Tesla installs now, that's what we went with, which actually though, is probably better for people in case you have trees or something that grow, you just never have to worry about it. And a cool thing I can tell just with this new inverter and those 12 new panels, I can see the solar starting, even though yeah. it's not the perfect location, just the tiniest bit of light, sunlight, yeah. and I can start seeing like 100 watts starting to come through. So we're getting more solar even though it's not a good orientation, yeah. the best orientation, we can see that this definitely works at lower amounts of sunlight than maybe these other ones which require all the panels to be lit up. And then, so other things they did over here is we actually did need a new disconnect box because we needed it upsized since we now have four inverters. So they did that. We were able to still use the single meter that was already previously installed. So that's actually nice because it was kind of a fear of ours that we might end up with two meters and we really didn't want that. Well, three meters because well, we three, have, yeah. Yeah, we all, so this is our solar production meter. We have another meter which yeah. measures what we get usage. from the utility company and what we send back. But the cool thing is they were able to reroute things here slightly, move this breaker panel over, fit in the other inverter, upsize that and tie into the existing solar production meter and this is, I think, one of the first ones that they've done. Yeah, most previously required any new solar addition to have its own meter. So luckily we were able to get around that. Uh, I think some new things came into place and now they're not requiring that, which is really nice because I just didn't want a whole nother meter for that little system. So f maybe for some of you others out there who've already bought a small, medium, large, or even an extra large system, if yeah. you're looking to expand that, you might be able to, depending on your situation, you might be able to just add another inverter, add some more panels, and tie into your existing meter yeah. and expand it that way. So the one thing I bet you all are wondering though is how much did this addition cost? Well, previously for this solar that we got, which was a 16 and a half kilowatt system, it costs about 55000 Before taxes. Before taxes, Tax correct. credits, we should Tax say. credits. Um, and so the new system was actually about 9800 before tax credits. The uh, reason we wanted it in 2019, though, is because those tax credits were still at 30%. Now, though, they're at 26 Yeah, they've gone down at the so, beginning of 2020, so it's going to be 26% for uh, tax you know, credit credits. that you can get on any installs for this year. Adding that up, we're about $65,000 in for our solar. So while that 65000 was before tax credits, we ended up with about 30% of that back, which really does help. Uh, even though now it's 26, it still helps. But we calculated out the uh, 
payoff time for these three, our old system. I'll go ahead and link that video up in the iCard. But now the new system actually will take a little bit longer for payoff. That's the only downside. Yeah, basically the, the other panels we put on on the first system were all facing southeast, east, and west. Very optimized planes. But due to the, the orientation of the house, the new panels that we put on are actually kind of facing nor northwest or west. And because we have a mountain there, we won't get sunlight 365 days a year. Yeah direct sunlight but in the summer it will really help out we're expecting you know in the summers to get about 25 percent more solar production yeah and we actually knew this going in it was actually told to us by tesla but that was really our last spot left to put solar so yeah. we really didn't have much of a choice if we wanted to expand and the cool thing is i was just out checking the numbers and we're getting about 17 percent more now so right even now with yeah. the panels facing the non-optimal direction and we're in the middle of winter we're those panels are helping us to increase our production by about 17 percent. But yeah, I don't know. Let us know down below. Have you guys upgraded your system? What has your experience been? Obviously, we doubled down on our solar because the results were just so promising. And since we still had some room and had passed that one year mark with our current utility company, we could actually add some more that we weren't allowed to begin with. Now, so if you do look on the roof, yeah, you might say there's a there's, there's room a, for a few more panels, but yeah. again, they're not the optimal location. Yeah. And there's a lot of other conduits. And we have stuff the evaporative there. cooler we've, now, we've which would really block cooler. a lot. But we did also check with uh, buying into a solar farm or yeah. a community solar. And the prices there actually weren't that great they were okay and if you don't want to put solar on your roof it is a way to have roofless solar and basically you can buy it into a solar farm somewhere in your county or neighborhood depending on where you live and that helps basically offset your usage but the prices were actually really maybe even more expensive yeah, than just more. buying these panels and we wouldn't see those production going directly into our power walls right so the nice thing since we do have those power walls we have the solar I mean, we did the 200 hour off grid test yeah. and we worked great. Now we wouldn't be able to do that if we were part of a solar farm. And now in the future, that might be the only way we can expand our production. So probably we, if we wanted to add another, you know, four to six kilowatts, maybe we do that. I'm still hoping that Tesla though will eventually get into wind generation. Yeah. We've turbines. Seen, we've seen some turbines and some other wind generated energy sources that yeah. It's something that we could tie in and wouldn't need to go on the roof necessarily. And we get a lot of wind get here, a lot of so, high winds. so hopefully Tesla will get into wind generation one of these days. Yeah, that would be really nice. Wind ele electrical generation via wind. Yeah, we'll uh, let you test out here, Elon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. Definitely comment down below though what you think. I mean, I'm really happy with everything and um, it's really nice to just be able to add more solar finally. But yeah, that's basically it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. As always, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. If you guys are looking to accessorize Model S, X, or Model 3, definitely check them out. And using code TESLA INVENTORY will get you 15% off your first order. As always, though, thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. Go ahead and click there to subscribe here for some other ones. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.